GMT has entered a very exciting stage of its development. It's exciting because of the visible uh, achievements that are uh, manifest. The first mirror of the, pri the first primary mirror is done. The second mirror is almost finished polishing. We have the third, the fourth, and the fifth mirror all cast and ready to go. So that means we know we can uh, start with a four mirror telescope configuration to do all of the engineering studies. And then we also have the glass for the sixth and seventh mirror. So the mirrors are moving along beautifully. The next large item, the telescope mount that holds the mirrors and holds the instruments, we are ready to go out for a final design and build a contract on that. That will be early next year. And then finally, the other hugely visible part of the project, the enclosure. We've started the hard rock excavation so we can prepare the foundation and we'll be ready over the next year and a half to two years to issue contracts for the other stages of the enclosure. So we see the mirrors are ready, the uh, telescope mount is ready to be bid out, and the enclosure is going to start to be built up. So there'll be real manifestation on the mount, on the summit, where people take note. You know, I'm, I'm learning more about astronomy and it's clear to me that the GMT, especially by being first on the sky, is going to answer a lot of fundamental questions in cosmology and in astronomy, and also is going to address questions of great interest to the public. In the former case, it has to do with looking back even closer to the origins of the universe, the Big Bang, understanding the reionization process, understanding the formation of galaxies in those early millennia of, of, the, of the universe. In the case of the public, they are keenly interested in understanding the atmospheres of these exoplanets, these Earth-like planets. We know there are billions of them out there, but we don't know anything about them. But now with the GMT, we can collect enough light that we can analyze the spectra, and we can tell whether there are molecules that we think are essential for life. Diatomic oxygen, methane, water, ozone. This will be the first time in humankind that we can do that. As much progress as we're making, there are still challenges. We still have the challenge of making sure we generate enough funds to, to, to build out everything the astronomers want. Okay? We will have technical challenges that we can't foresee, but we're confident that we can overcome those. For example, the seismic isolation that we need to do, we now have a system that's been proven time and time again in California, which, like Chile, is on the ring of fire in the Pacific. So we have ways of achieving success even with these technical challenges. The contributions from Sao Paulo, from FAPESP, are really essential to what we're doing. Uh, in a day-in, day-out sense, it's the experience of Professor Zhao, uh, of Professor Claudia, but then the technical aspects come into play with help with the instrumentation design, the instrumentation building, and I think in the future uh, we can get Brazilian industry involved as we build up uh, the, the telescope enclosure because of the prior success with the SOAR telescope. <music>